Hello guys, now let us see what happens in the high slip region. So let us see how this formula came into picture. So for this again we shall go back and look at the formula which I have written earlier. That is stock proportional to same formula I am going to take. Again here what I said high slip region. So S will be significantly high when compared to low slip region. So S is significantly high in sense. I can't ignore this. I can't ignore to 0 as we did for the low slip region. So it is significantly higher when compared to R2 square. So now I am going to terminate this R2 square equal to 0. So what will be the equation? The equation will be SR2 whole divided by yes x2 whole square here r2 square plus was there r2 square got equal to 0 the reason why we are doing that because this is greater when compared to this and this will be significantly what affecting our torque so very lessly less significantly it will be affecting the torque so this is the major thing which affects the torque more so that's why i'm going to consider this part uh, ignoring r2 square to 0 so now what happens uh, as you can see uh, s square it is so ss gets cancelled is 1 by yes whereas r2 and x2 again let us say uh, since we are uh, operating at the high slip region so at the high slip region it is almost like it is saturation region where r2 and x2 will be almost same so r2 and x2 gets cancelled since they are both at the same as i said no, it is only possible during maximum slip condition and also here you can see it is a maximum slip condition at maximum slip condition what happens there since this is a high slip region and R2 becomes equal to X2. So that goes uh, cancel out each other because R2 is equal to X2. Okay. So now what happens? Torque is inversely proportional to S. Yes. Now again, let us consider the same scenario. Let us say uh, for this high slip region, let us say again, you are going to increase the load. Now what happens when you increase the load? Obviously, when you increase the load, that is true. Speed will decrease. But we know that SC is equal to NS minus N. If speed decreases, then Ns minus N, whatever the value I get after differencing, after different, after subtracting one from the another, what happens? Again, slip value will increase, same as that of the low slip region. So, slip increases here also. Same, it happened in the low slip region. So, when slip increases, so what happens? Torque will decrease. Why? Torque is inversely proportional to slip. So, when torque decreases, speed again it will decrease speed again decreases so if speed again decreases then what happens slip again increases because ns minus n right slip is equal to ns minus n so speed decreases means again the difference between ns and n will increase so slip again will increase again further it will decrease eventually this cycle continues till your motor stops so for this region i can't operate my motor so if i operate above this point above this point a then what happens the motor will come to what stand still eventually the speed will decrease okay so here you can see that uh, what we can understand from this here is uh, it has a straight line as well as rectangular hyperbola this is the straight line and this is the hyperbola part okay and this is the stable part that is OA is a stable part and AB is unstable part. Okay. Uh, this is what here it is given here. And if we see the diagram clearly, we will get here. You can see uh, OA written here stable. AB is written as unstable region because why unstable? Their motor would go into uh, slow down eventually and finally it stops. You can see point A. Where is point A? It is over here. Maximum torque. At the maximum torque, remember always there is a maximum slip S equal to SM is equal to R2 by X2. So where R2 is equal to X2, remember. Why? Why? Because S equal to SM. Okay. Maximum slip. And we know that maximum slip value can be 1, not greater than 1. Okay. So R2 is equal to X2. Okay. Remember for this condition also. Okay. Next point B. Where is point B? You can see point B is over here. That is called as starting torque. Why it is starting torque? Remember, obviously, starting torque is present only when your motor is having speed 0. Okay, that's why we are calling it as starting torque. As I said, motor stops rotating at this particular part. So, this particular part, if I draw with the dotted line with the y-axis, so it is called as starting torque. With respect to this, the speed is 0. And with respect to this, when speed is 0, we all know that slip is equal to 1. Because 
i s equal to n s minus n and n is equal to zero yes or not so slip is equal to one okay remember that always when speed is zero slip value is always equal to one now coming to point c where is point c point c is over here it is full low torque what is full low torque remember full low torque is that part where your motor is running at the rated load as well as the rated current is flowing in the motor as well as the temperature is within the uh, rated limit temperature of the motor is within the limits whatever for the design so full low torque is this part okay so remember again full low torque is always less than the maximum torque tf is tfl is always less than the maximum torque so always remember to operate your motor from o to a not from a to b and you can see that at this particular part i have written as slip is equal to zero n is equal to ns okay so when this is possible it i can say it is closely equal to ns because slip value is always almost very 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 less during the light load condition or no load condition your rotor speed is almost equal to the stator speed okay this particular part this is the torque slip characteristics initially it follows linear that is torque is proportional to s and after that what happens torque is inversely proportional to s so that's what even if slip increases the torque decreases and finally it stops okay and one thing remember ns is always constant throughout this operation right from this beginning to end okay n is the parameter which varies always so the difference of ns and n is equal to s so the value ns minus n will always change the value the value after uh, subtracting will always change like i said full load torque is always less than your maximum torque always try to operate in oc region itself don't cross this from c to a because as i said the temperature limits will uh, increase beyond the designed limit so if the temperature increases then what happens uh, the insulations or windings may fail for the during a long time process i i don't say it happens instantaneously just crossing the value of point c it happens after over a period of time so try not crossing the point c always you have to operate till from o to c for the uh, for a longer life span of your motor okay for some extent and all you can operate but like i said the temperature increases which will deteriorate the insulation properties of your motor okay long term run and all it is not good only for short term and all you can do but long term and all it will be a problem to the motor now let us see motoring generating and braking region okay motoring generating and braking region the first paragraph is with respect to the motoring region now let us see motoring region in this uh, graph okay motoring region is from this part to this part that is uh, the slip is in between 0 to 1 you can see that slip is greater than 0 and it is less than 1 so operate always greater than 0 and less than 1 that is for the motoring region part so from this point to this point is the motoring region part and you can see if you uh, see this picture which goes like this and reduces it is similar to that of your torque slip characteristics okay just it is a mirror image of this you can see it's a mirror image of your torque slip characteristics and we are discussing about what motor region okay now what is happening in the motoring region as the name itself indicates motoring region in sense what your uh, um, induction motor takes electrical input from the supply and converts it in the mechanical energy mechanical output okay so that thing we call it as what motoring part taking electrical input and converting into mechanical the motor rotor which the rotates is about the mechanical thing it's called as motoring region okay this already we have learned before what happens and this is the low slip region so during low slip region what happens speed will be almost equal to the uh, your synchronous speed as your load increases uh, what happens slip increases so torque also increases so this is the linear part where torque is proportional to the slip and here you can see this is the unstable region 
where you are operating more than the slip one maximum slip one so what happens your torque is inversely proportional to yes so you are uh, a motor will eventually stop and it reaches the starting torque okay and finally at this particular point it is s equal to one that is normally your n is equal to zero and here it is n is equal to ns okay so next part is what your uh, uh, breaking part the second paragraph it is is with respect to what breaking part now let us see how to stop the motor when it is rotating okay so what we will do here is when you want to apply brakes or you are when you want to run the motor in the braking region and all so what we'll be doing as we know that stator consists of three phase winding so in the, out of three phase winding i will interchange any two phases when i change any two phases what happens the direction of the rotational magnetic field will be opposite to that of the existing one so if initially say if it is rotating in the clockwise means now after changing the uh, two phases interchanging the two phases it will uh, rmf will start to rotate in the opposite direction that is anti clockwise direction so we know that rotor always follows the rmf right rotors always form, uh, follows the rmf direction but now what happened the rmf direction is changed to the anti clockwise direction so rotor will try to rotate in the anti clockwise direction so instead of running in the clockwise now it stops again again now it tries to rotate in the anti clockwise direction again make sure you uh, disconnect the supply to the stator as soon as your rotor stops you can achieve the braking region you can see that slip is greater than one during the braking region remember always that slip should be always greater than the one okay in the braking region as we know that motoring region and all what happens um, a slip is in between zero and one whereas for the braking region the slip should be always greater than one so nothing but what nothing but what you can say is your rotor has stopped rotating further as we have interchanged the two phases so due to that we have changed the rotation of direction of the rmf from clockwise into anti clockwise and due to that instead of instead of rotating in the clockwise direction rotor will try to rotate in the anti clockwise direction so meanwhile it stops in between so when it stops make sure you remove the supply connected to the stator okay now let us discuss what is happening in the generating region see rem remember generating region in sense what your motor acts like a induction generator means now we get what negative slip yes always till now we discuss slip is positive as s, uh, s is equal to ns minus n ns is always greater than n but since we are discussing now generating region now what happens n is greater than ns n is greater than ns so you get what negative slip you get what negative slip this is what you can call it is inverted image of this in the negative slip is nothing but what generating action this is only possible when your rotor rotates more than the rated speed or more than the synchronous speed so during this what happens it follows the inverting here inverting of this uh, motoring region okay you can see here okay why we are drawn in the negative part as i said it is rotating in the uh, uh, negative slip direction so negative slip direction in sense what your motor rotor is running at the greater than the uh, synchronous speed so obviously for with slip will be less than zero yes or not you can see s is equal to ns minus n we have and again n is greater than ns so ns minus n will result you negative value so slip will be always less than the zero if you want to run your work as your mode work your motor as in induction generator make sure you run the motor greater than the uh, rated speed or synchronous speed of the given motor thus you can achieve induction generation process or generating region this is only possible in the negative remember as it is in the generation region or generating region now what happens your motor takes mechanical input and gives electrical output to the stator okay 